Here we have three coffee grinders. $30, $300, and $3,000. What makes this one so much better than this one? And which one might be right for you and your house? Well, let's find out. Hello, my name is Steven Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. If you're new around here, welcome. And if you like coffee videos just like this, if you'd like to subscribe and like this video, that would be really helpful for both us and you get to see more content just like this. So today we are talking about coffee grinders, going from a really budget cheap option to one that's $3,000. So let's just get right into it with this budget option. This is the Mr. Coffee automatic burr mill coffee grinder. It retails for $38 for this version. There's a newer version that I believe is like 45. Now there are cheaper options out there for coffee grinders, but usually those are going to be blade grinders, which are a very different type of grinder to burr grinders. If you don't know the difference, burr grinders use a set of spinning blades that rub up against one another, crush coffee beans uniformly and evenly, versus a blade is just kind of throwing everything around like popcorn and you don't really know what you're gonna get. So burrs are always going to be a better option than blades. Now as for the features in this grinder, it has a timer on here so it automatically starts and stops based on the number that you have it set to on here. It is quite loud, as you probably heard from right there. It is adjustable just by rotating the top here. So you can go from fine, espresso is what they label it as, although I would never use that for espresso, all the way to coarse. And then down here we have the bin, which has an attached little scoop and brush right on top, which is a nice little thing. You're supposed to clean out this little chute here every time you grind. But I purposely didn't really clean this out, just to kind of show how much static builds up in there. But it's fine. It functions well, it grinds coffee actually a little bit better than I expected it to. And if you only wanna spend $30 on a coffee grinder, I think that is a wise investment that will get you a much better coffee at home than buying free ground. So moving on to our next tier, we have the Fellow Ode. This grinder retails for $300 with the stock burr set in it. You can also upgrade it to a nicer burr set, which we'll talk about a little bit later. I decided to do that, but you can get this grinder for $300 and it's still a very good grinder for the price point. Some features of it, it is only designed for filter coffee. It is not meant for espresso, which is kind of the same as the Mr. Coffee, even though they label the finest grind as espresso, it is not fine enough. It is meant to be a single dose grinder, meaning that you just add in the amount of coffee that you're using to brew and you're not meant to sort of fill up the hopper. It has a knocker down here, which is nice for getting any coffee grounds that are sort of stuck up there down. It has pretty low retention, meaning you don't have much that is left in here. It's pretty quiet, I'll turn it on here. And then it will automatically stop when it senses that it's done grinding coffee. You can also stop it manually. It is aesthetically pleasing, it looks really nice. It Feels built really nice. Overall, I've been really enjoying this grinder for $300. You can't really get much better than this. So this is the Malconig EK43. As you can see, it's slightly too big to fit in the video. So this is its hopper. It sits way up there. This grinder retails for $3,150 US dollars. It weighs 54 pounds. It is huge. It is built, ow, like a tank. It has a giant set of burrs in here, a huge motor. This grinder is more than anyone would ever need for their home because it's not meant for the home. It is a commercial grinder. It's meant for a coffee shop. It is built to go through a lot of coffee really quickly, day after day for years. But I mean, it's really nice. It goes from as coarse as you could ever want with French press or cold brew, all the way to espresso. It can do espresso. It has pretty much no retention thanks to this lever over here that really gets out all the coffee in there. You can clip on bags of coffee on here, both retail and five pound bags and grind through them right in a breeze. It is just, it is a joy to work with in a cafe. Now, if you're watching this video, you obviously care about your coffee. 
And your equipment you're using, like a grinder, is only a small part of that equation. And something that plays an even bigger role is the coffee you're using. And that's where Trade Coffee comes in. Trade Coffee allows you to explore a personalized assortment of coffees from the nation's top roasters. Take their quiz that asks you things like, how do you like your coffee? How do you brew it? What's your experience level? And they take all that information to curate matches just for you. Your coffee is then roasted and shipped directly from the roaster, ensuring peak freshness, and you get to try new coffees and new roasters with every shipment. Right now, Trade is running a promotion for Father's Day offering 10% off that are incredible and already affordable subscription boxes. So just follow the link in the description below to get 10% off of your subscription from Trade Coffee. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. Now in order to sort of understand why some grinders are a lot more expensive than others, let's talk a little bit about grinding theory. And to put simply, the most important aspect in grinding coffee is grind uniformity. In order to demonstrate that, Let's talk about cooking potatoes. Would you just heat up a pan, throw the potato in there, and go for it? Well, if you are a normal person, then probably not. We all know what's gonna happen. The outside of the potato is going to cook, but the inside is going to be very raw. But if we take that potato and we cut it into pieces, now we have more surface area and we're gonna be able to cook through that potato more. That is why we grind coffee in the first place. If we took entire coffee beans and tried to brew with them, you would maybe get something out of the outer portion of the beans, but you would not be able to extract everything out of the middle, and it would just taste pretty bad. Now let's go a step further and say we took this piece, we obviously kept cutting it, but we cut it into pieces like this. If we have a lot of pieces like this, where we have a lot of smaller pieces, but then some bigger ones, these smaller pieces can overcook and the larger pieces can undercook, which is why we want to take this potato and cut it into relatively even pieces so that they all cook at about the same time. I don't know why I'm still cutting this potato. We all get the point by now. Now I should probably cook this potato so it doesn't go to waste. All right. So where were we? So all of this stuff that we just talked about with potatoes can be applied to coffee. Not only do we want to obviously grind coffee in the first place, but also we want those coffee grounds to be fairly uniform. Because if we have a large range of particle sizes in our coffee grounds, all those larger ones won't be able to extract well. So we'll get a lot of under extracted, sour, weak flavors. And if we have a lot of really fine particles, those are going to over extract. So those will lead to bitter or stringent flavors that we don't want. And when we have a little bit of everything in our cup of coffee, it's going to make that taste really muddy, unclean. You're not gonna be able to get all of the great characteristics out of an individual coffee. So higher end grinders like the Malkunig EK43 are designed in a way that we have a narrower particle distribution size. And the biggest way that they are able to do that is with burrs. So all of these are burr grinders, but not all burrs are created equal. So these are the burrs from each of the grinders. We have the Mr. Coffee burr. Here is the one from the fellow Ode. The silver is not part of the burr. They're just mounted under there and I don't want to take them off. And then these are the burrs from the EK43. So we have a 98 millimeter burr, meaning 98 millimeter diameter, 64 millimeter, and 40. Now this video is not going to go deep into the science of burrs and how they affect your cup and all these crazy things. If you're interested in that sort of thing, check out Lance Hedrick's YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description down below. He goes into things that I can't even comprehend. He's a genius. Basically, with burrs, you have a lot of different materials, obviously sizes, but also shapes. You can have different coatings that'll make burrs last longer. But some of the basics are like bigger burrs are able to grind coffee faster because you have more surface area being able to just go right through all those beans versus this is so tiny but burrs also affect your particle size. So with burrs like the EK43, you're able to get less fines and less boulders versus something like this. It's just not designed super well, and so you're gonna get more variance in your grinds. It also obviously costs a lot more to create these burrs and also everything that goes along with them. That's why this needs such a huge 
motor and you need a lot higher quality components just for the burrs. And so that really plays a part into the cost as well. All right, so now that we have talked about why grind quality is important, I'm gonna do a couple of very unscientific tests. I'm gonna take this coffee here from Wonder State Coffee, courtesy of Trade, and I am going to dial in a V60 pour over recipe with each grinder. I'm gonna go with 20 grams of coffee to 320 grams of water, aiming for a total brew time of about four minutes. And I'm gonna look for a few things along the way. First, I'm just curious how fast each grinder is compared to one another. If you want, I'm sure you could look up the exact grinding speed of each of these grinders and find out, but just to give a side-by-side -side comparison would be helpful. Next, we're gonna take a look at what each of those grind settings looks like. So what is using that recipe, what do the grinds look like on this grinder versus this grinder versus this grinder, just to visualize it. And then finally, I'm gonna taste each one. We're gonna talk about what differences happen in the taste of your cup of coffee from all the differences in these grinders. So let's hop right into that. So I'll throw up on the screen what those grounds each look like. And an obvious thing you'll notice is just the difference in the grind quality coming from each grinder. The Mr. Coffee, as you can see, has some boulders in there, those really big chunks of grinds, and also some really fine ones. The Fellow did a lot better. It's pretty consistent throughout. And then the Malconig also did great. And I don't have a like particle analyzer to show the size of all these grounds, but my guess would be that the Mr. Coffee grounds are gonna have a lot wider spread, so a lot more boulders, fines, and sort of be all over the place, and all of that is sort of coming to a median, giving us the same recipe, versus say the Malconig is gonna have a very uniform grind size, and that point is gonna be sort of what all of the grounds in the Mr. Coffee average out to. And then the fellow is gonna be kind of in the middle there. Uh, maybe have some slight differences versus the EK, but not as much. All that being said, let's go ahead and taste these. I unfortunately don't have three of the same drinking cups. So I have two glasses and a ceramic mug. If you think that the ceramic is going to change my perceptions, well, don't know what to tell you. This for coffee. Here's the fellow. Here's the EK. It's pretty interesting. They're all the same coffee, you can tell, but it, they taste like very different extractions. So in the Mr. Coffee, the coffee is good, but sort of what that grinder did is you have a lot of under and over extraction in the cup. You have under extraction because you have a lot of big boulders and those aren't able to extract fully in our brew time, but then also a lot of over extraction because you have a lot of finer particles. So all of that is coming together in the cup. It's just a little muddy, not very clean. Versus when we go up to the fellow Ode, it's a really clean cup. We just get all of those flavors are just more perceptive versus feeling like there's a cloud sort of over the flavors in this one, which is sort of a weird thing to say, but maybe that makes sense to you. And then we get to the EK, and it's just taking the fellow up a little bit of a notch. So we have a little bit more flavor, a little bit more sweetness. If someone's just beginning to maybe dive into coffee tasting, they may not notice as much of a difference between those. But I would argue that most people could probably taste the difference between the Mr. Coffee and everything else. Now that we have gone over grind quality, uniformity, and why those things are important, let's just look at features that some grinders offer that others may not. We are only going to look at the Mr. Coffee and the Fellow for this part of the video for a couple reasons. First off, the EK43 is a commercial grinder. It is not meant for home use, although if it's in your budget and you want to play around with a grinder like that, go for it. Another reason we're not gonna look at the EK it's because of the law of diminishing returns. If you're not familiar, it's basically just the more and more money you spend on a certain item, the less and less that money is going to get for you. So as an example, 
going from $30 to $300, you're getting a lot more grinder for your money. Going from this to the Malconic EK43, you are not getting that much more out of a grinder like that, especially for just home use. Now the Mr. Coffee, this grinder is sort of just meant for someone that knows that they should be grinding coffee fresh at home, but that's about it. It is not really meant for anyone that weighs out their coffee. I guess you could, but it's not designed for that. It's really just meant for someone that wants to grind coffee and doesn't really care about much else. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. If you like coffee, but you don't want to be a total coffee nerd, you don't want to weigh out all of your coffee and focus on all these little things, that's fine. Just enjoy your coffee however you want to. Grinding fresh will get you better tasting coffee. So if buying this grinder is something that appeals to you, please, Go for it. Features in the Fellow Ode. Like we talked about earlier, it is a single dosing grinder. So it is not for someone that wants to fill the hopper and grind on demand. It's a lot more quiet, which is an important thing, especially if you're grinding early in the morning when maybe other people in the house are trying to sleep. So that is a big plus with this one. You're gonna get more precise control with this knob here versus on here. It's just, they're not really giving you a whole lot to work with. And then a grinder like the Ode, it is designed for someone that wants the ability to maybe tinker with things. You know, they probably don't advertise that you should be taking this apart and adjusting things. But you can take off this front panel, as we saw earlier. You can get to the burrs. You can swap them out for other things. You can calibrate those burrs so that they're nice and even with each other. You can't do any of that with the Mr. Coffee. So this is designed to get you the best possible quality coffee out of a grinder. This is designed just to grind coffee. And whichever one is more important for you, well, that's totally up to you, your coffee routine, and what you're looking for out of your beverage. This was our video on three different coffee grinders at three drastically different price points. I hope it was helpful for you to understand why some grinders are so much more expensive than others, and hopefully helps you determine if one of these grinders or a different one might be great for you at home. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Let us know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. And until next time, happy brewing. Man, I should eat more potatoes. Should I? This video's gonna take forever to finish. Isn't that right, Leo? You want some potato? Here, right? There you go. I know it's pretty good, right? It's good because I cut them all really evenly. So they're all able to cook at an even rate. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, so good. We're talking about potatoes in every video from here on, just so everyone knows. I'm just getting over a cold, so I'm congested, my throat hurts. So I feel like every single take of this video, I'm going to sound a little bit different. Kind of throw a little bit of mystery at ya. So now that... <coughs> so now that... <coughs>